Hi, my name is Ned and in this video we'll take a look at Caspio's new and improved charts. In the 9.5 release we have introduced 15 new charts to help you visualize and share data analysis across millions of records of data in a matter of seconds. The new charts have an updated look and feel, including the new animation effects and styles. You can show and hide elements to key in on specific data metrics. You can automatically resize the charts depending on the width of the browser. You can plot a series based on the data in a single field. You can print and download charts. You can display data in percentages instead of values and much, much more. Let's take a closer look at how to configure four common use cases of charts based on the sales data that we have inside the account. In my spreadsheet I have regions in a single column, we have rep names, and we are also tracking actual sales, forecasted sales, and pipeline of each of the regions. What I'm trying to accomplish is to take the data I have inside the spreadsheet and plot it onto a chart so that I can see a better visual representation of what my data actually means. Let's go to data pages to learn how to configure each of the charts. In my demo today I have already pre-configured four different charts and I will be walking you through step by step on how to configure each one and how you can apply this knowledge to your own use cases. The first chart that we're going to take a look at is the column chart. And what the column chart is doing is giving us the sales by region. And what we're doing is we're basically plotting the regions based on month. And inside the actual month, we can see the region broken down as a series. And we're calculating the total sum of all of the actual sales per region. So let's take a look inside Caspio how this was created. You can see that I have my column chart selected. On the next screen, make sure you select your data source table that contains all of your numerical values. And just like building a report, if you build a chart, you can also have a search capability along with a predefined criteria depending on how you wish to have this functionality set up. I opted out to do a predefined criteria based on the date field. And what I'm doing is basically wanting to see the data for year 2016 or greater. Once you reach the screen where you configure the chart options, note that the chart elements portion of the wizard may look different depending on the type of chart that you select initially. We recommend that you go through each of the charts to familiarize yourself with the given settings. The first element that I can modify is the chart settings, and here we can change our title and our subtitle. Both are optional. You can also change the width and height according to your preference. You can enable zooming. You can also enable chart actions menu and what this allows you to do is to have the ability to download and print the chart off of your website. So if we look at the live example in the upper right corner you're going to be able to see this button that you can click on in order to print or download the chart. You also have display options and here you can enable or disable the legend. If you enable the legend you're going to be able to see it on your chart. And what's really neat about it is that you can click on each one of these items to show and hide elements for comparison purposes. Under display options you can also enable or disable vertical or horizontal grid lines on your chart. For our second element which is the data source settings, here you have two ways on how you can plot your data. And it all depends on how your data is formatted inside your table. So you can either plot the chart based on a single field, if you have all of your records inside a single field that you want to use as a series, and this is commonly referred to as a dynamic series or a pivot chart, or if you have your data in separate columns, then you're going to be able to use the second radio button. And later on in the demo, I'm going to show you both examples how we can actually use the second radio button to plot the data if we have multiple columns that we wish to plot the values on. For the third element, we have the category, which is the x-axis. That should be self-explanatory. If we look at our live example, here is my x-axis. And what we're seeing there is we're actually seeing the data group based on month. So in my wizard here, I have the category field selected, which is my date field for my table. And I'm doing a date rollup based on month. As for my series, I'm basically plotting the region name as the series inside the middle of my chart. So if we look at the live example, you can see that all of my regions are plotted as a series inside the chart itself. 
for my y-axis, we have the total as the title. And then for the value added, we have the data tip, label, both, or none. I recommend that you play with each one of these value options to see which one you have a preference for. And I'm formatting my data as a currency. As for the value, I'm basically doing the sum of my field called actual sales. So there's my column called actual sales, and I'm doing the aggregation of sum. If you set up everything correctly, at this point you can click preview or save your changes by clicking on finish. I'm not going to do that because I already have my chart created. I'm just going to show you the final output. And here is your very basic column chart. Now you have the series in the middle, which is the regions. In our example, I have the month at the very bottom on the x-axis, and I'm doing the actual sum for each one of the regions. For the next chart that I'm going to show you is the spline area. Now the only difference between the spline area and the column chart that we just looked at is the visual perspective. Let's go to Caspio. Let me actually show you the wizard of the spline area. That way you can see the difference or the slight difference between how the column chart was created versus the spline area. Go ahead and select the spline area chart. Navigate all the way to the configuration screen of the chart. The only difference between the configuration of the column chart and the spline area is under value, which gives me the ability to enable a marker. Now what the marker stands for is this point here. You can see that all of my regions are stacked on top of each other and we see this nice marker to identify different regions. There's one for southeast and then we have one for west. Again, it's the same exact data, same exact setup. The only difference here is the way the data is presented visually. For the third chart that we're going to look at today is the column stack chart. And this one is actually going to use the second radio button for separate fields. So let's take a look inside Caspio how this is done. Be sure to select the stat column chart. Navigate all the way to the configuration screen. And now you're going to see a big difference between the prior charts that we just looked at. So the chart setting is more or less the same. You can add your title, your subtitle. But when it comes to data source settings, I am now using the second radio button because I have my pipeline, I have my forecast sales, and I have my actual sales in three different columns, and I want to be able to plot them onto the chart. So we're going to go ahead and select the second radio button. My x-axis is still the same. I have my date at the bottom and grouped as a month. For my y-axis, I have the total, and I'm also formatting this as a currency. For my first value, I'm plotting the pipeline, and my aggregation is using the sum option. To add a second value, you simply need to click on this insert button to add a new value. And my second value in this case is forecast, also sum. And my value 3 is going to be actual sales and sum. If you set up this correctly and you look at your column stack chart, you're not going to be able to see your pipeline, your forecast, and also your actual sales broken down by month. And last but not least, for the last chart that we're going to look at today is the pie chart. And at the moment, the way my pie chart is set up is we have all the regions, and we can see percentage-wise of all the revenue that's brought in by each one of the regions. So let's go to Caspio. Make sure to select the pie chart from the option. Navigate all the way to the configuration screen. For the first element, we have the chart settings. Again, you can apply your width and height. You can also add your title and your subtitle. For the category in the middle of my pie chart, I want to be able to plot the region name. And what I'm doing basically here is I'm grabbing the actual sales, I want the sum, and I want that to be presented as a percentage rather than as a value. And if you set it up this way, this is what your pie chart is going to look like. Now with the slight change, I can turn this pie chart into a donut chart. Let's go back a few steps. And instead of pie chart, I would like to be able to see a donut chart and what the donut chart allows you to do under category is to select your main category which is going to be inside the middle and for my subcategory I want to be able to see sales broken down based on region for all of my sales reps and under value I'm going to go ahead and disable the percentage because I want to show this as a value I'm going to edit my format and turn this into currency when done hit OK hit finish and now what I have before is the pie chart. I'm going to refresh the browser. And now you're going to be able to see a donut chart, but what you're seeing now in the middle is the regions. 
and total revenue and then we can see the breakdown of revenue per sales rep for each of the individual regions. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest tips and tricks on how to use Caspio and visit us at howto.caspio.com for more in-depth videos and tutorials on how to use the platform. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for watching and good luck building your apps.